all right so as we were discussing about uh, the security topic we have uh, like triple a done access list done uh, asa uh, theory done which is a part of uh, zone based topic okay so you know the, the different uh, zones of uh, of a firewall so today i'm just doing a lab that's that that was discussed here okay so apart from uh, these topic you also have topics like control plane uh, policy device hardening a few topics on telnet versus ssh all all kind of uh, the security topics okay and uh, you have those enable uh, password uh, secrets okay you have those uh, type 5 uh, passwords md5 type 7 uh, some of them are irreversible irre some are non reversible so so these are some of the topic under security okay and apart from that we will also have uh, a few security topics with respective to layer 2 attacks where we will discuss like uh, CDP attacks, uh, <clears throat> DHCP attacks, uh, then uh, uh, the uh, the so, so something related to layer two, and we will also see what are the uh, remedy for that, or how how do you uh, how how do you fix the issue or layer two issues? Okay, so these are all security topics from uh, the. So these are few topics here uh, under security line and password protection AAA COPP ACLs let's see what is under NRC so under NRC for security uh, AAA uh, the unicast reverse path forwarding telnet ssh uh, snmp the authentication the authentication of uh, eigrp ospf so these are some topics here okay okay fine so let's see the lab for the day okay uh, so if you, if I just brief you, uh, we we started with ASA uh, comparison with some of the next generation firewalls. This was one of the uh, end of life device. This is the ASA firewall different versions depending upon the interface throughput and the feature list. These are the uh, the high the advanced version which is capable of running firepower as well. So you get ASA hardware as well as you can uh, top it on the virtual appliance like uh, VM workstation or you can also make use of service module and put it on a free chassis and you can uh, get the features of ASA. So this is how the cabling happens out, outside phasing uh, zone, inside phasing zone and uh, you have a DMZ zone. Also you get a management zone which uh, using which you can uh, uh, the the configure ASDM the graphical interface. Then we discuss uh, discussed about uh, security levels. So the three zones will have uh, the different securities. The two the important ones are inside and outside. Inside being hundred, outside being zero, and uh, <clears throat> anything apart from these two, if you configure by default, they are gonna get zero. Okay, but you can uh, change the security level if you if you input the command uh, security hyphen level and you can just change them. These are like the important uh, three plus one settings in case of firewall. So you need to define name if security level IP address and no shutdown. These are some examples of uh, security levels. So one to nine is good for your uh, DMZ management, all those things. Zero being uh, 
the highest risk or outside facing and 100 being uh, the most trustful or inside. This is the rules about the traffic flow. So your traffic flow is always happening. Uh, let's say if you have enabled uh, the inspection ping and you have uh, enabled that uh, uh, command called as same security level permit interfaces. In this scenario, you can ping between the two similar security levels or a higher security level to a lower security level okay 100 to 0 is possible or 100 between 100 and 100 is also possible if you have this particular line but from 0 to 100 is only possible if you write the access list and you permit the uh, traffic so that is the lab that we are gonna do today so what i do is what i am trying to do is on the same lab that we did our uh, ccnp cci enterprise so we have already uh, ac okay so I, i'll just put this uh, kind of banner so that we uh, we just hide those unwanted uh, devices okay so this is my firewall connected to the layer 2 switch and switch connected to to pc for for the testing purpose so what is the objective of uh, this lab would be so let's say if i redraw over here asa firewall connected to a switch and switch connected to two different hosts and these two different hosts are in two different networks so this is on VLAN 99, I have given an IP of this slash 24 and this is VLAN 100, 192.168.100.1 slash 24. Okay. So where, where is the gateway? Gateway would be here for both, both the, uh, for both of them. So let's say it's 192.168.100.100. Uh, and 192.168.99.100 okay so how can you have two uh, gateways on single interface so you have to make use of concept called sub interface okay so, so what are sub interfaces let's say if the main interface is this uh, 0 slash 0 sub interface is nothing but this and this okay so these are called sub interfaces this is one 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 of the type uh in the inter vlans if you if you remember inter vlan concept we had uh, sub interface mls and uh, uh, its own uh, uh the the legacy method its own gateway that was absolute in the market because it takes individual interface something like this if i have a gateway and i have a switch for every VLAN, I need to lay the cable. So this would be like VLAN 10, VLAN 20, 30, 40, and so on the different computers were connected. This is a old technology. We, we don't use this because that's gonna wastage of so many uh, physical ports. What was the second method? Second method was create sub interfaces. If I have a physical interface, I can create multiple sub interfaces, something like this. Okay. So basically for a couple of VLANs, I can create sub interfaces and I just need to have one of them. The, the third option was something called as SVI, which is nothing but you can make your VLANs acting as L3. You can configure IP address to these VLANs like 192.168.10.1.24. .1 you can create one more VLAN with VLAN 20. You can give an IP address 192.168.20.0/24, and you need to create the L2 VLANs as well, VLAN 10, VLAN 20. So this interface will be then made as a trunk, and we will allow 10, 20, and over here we will make it trunk once again, and we allow 10, 20. So that's how the inter VLANs happens so we are just making one of it once again here so 
just to prove that ASA supports inter VLAN and ASA support sub interfaces. Okay. So what is the, uh, what, what are the task here? The task is simple that I have to ping from uh, PC one to PC two. So my traffic, which goes over here, gets processed and come back to PC two. Okay. Processing will happen. The reason is they are two different VLANs. So it will enter over here. It will check all the processing and it will once again come back from that. You can, if you, if you're not able to uh, understand that you can also connect two physical interfaces if, in case, if you want to uh, understand that, but if, if uh, you can understand, then just try to, un uh, try to take it this way that it's going on the same interface, it's getting processed the steps that we talk and then it's coming back from the same interface. Okay. So we need to ping uh, from PC one to PC two and similar way I can also ping PC one to PC two. So I have to do a couple of things. First thing is first task could be to do the configuration. So I'll do the configuration. The second task could be to, uh, to set a ping between two of them. Let's say this is this is falling under security level 100 and this is also falling 100 falling under security level 100. The first thing in case of Cisco ASA to have ping, you need to enable ICMP. That is the first thing. Second thing, if you want to ping between two uh, similar security levels, you have to bring the same security command. Okay. So that ends your task number one. The task number two would be I'll change the security level of one of them. Let's say I'll make this as 50 and hundred. So I can see that my traffic from this direction is successful, but the traffic from this side will not go, uh, go and reach to the second PC. That's because, because of the security rules and regulations. Okay. You can ping from higher security to lower, but you cannot ping. Uh, back from secu uh, lower security to higher security. So what you need to do is you need to allow ACLs. So that's the whole objective of this lab and we are good with the day. Okay. So let's uh, proceed with the lab first. Uh, I'll just uh, reboot them so that we get a fresh copy of uh, device and I can show uh, the configuration from the scratch. So there's nothing done here. So we can also re reload. So let me see if the configs are removed. Okay. So it's been taken out. So the reboot did the work. I normally don't save anything because in the next class, then I just can reboot and do it from scratch. Okay. So from the uh, PC point of view, they are a Linux platform. So I just have configured static IP 99.1. Okay. And gateway is 99.100. So that 99.100, I just need to put it here. So I'll just start this. And same thing on the second box, the subnet is 100 now. And this is the gateway. So I have to configure 100.100 .100 here. I'll power on this. PC2, PC1. Okay. So let's uh, do the configuration on ASA first. Okay. Uh, I'll go to conf T, the normal procedure. It's going to ask you yes, no later. Just click, uh, type yes. Okay. Now, what is the interface? It's uh, GI0 slash 0. 
if if you just see this it's gi0 slash 0 okay so i go to gi0 slash 0 uh, the first thing here is the physical interface should be up okay as soon as you bring the physical interface up uh, then the configuration on sub interface are going to be uh, effective okay i mean to say let's say when you create sub interfaces the thumb rule is that you should bring the physical interface up no shutdown otherwise what happen if you just create sub interface or you create all the things like name if security level all those things but if you have not done no shut then your packet will not be uh, flowing so because your pa uh, your physical is still shut right you don't have to do no shut on these sub interfaces they are just sub interfaces you need to do no shutdown only under the physical interface so that's something which you need to remember okay the reason is by default all the interfaces will be admin down so you can see they are admin down okay so let's say if i go to this first sub interface i say name if is vlan 99 so what is going to happen as soon as i take something out of in inside and out uh, inside and outside any any other than these two uh, that is inside and outside by default the security level be, will be considered at zero okay so, so as of now, it's uh, it didn't allow me. The reason is it says that enter a VLAN because I'm going to make use of the sub interfaces. So I, I have to put up VLAN first. Okay. So this is my VLAN uh, tagging now from the ASA point of view. Now, let's say I put uh, this command. So it says that it has been set to zero, but I'll change that and I'll make it 100. Okay. So let's see uh, from the interface point of view. So you see now your sub interfaces, whatever you created is down because you have not brought your uh, parent or the physical interface up. So you don't, you have to do that. Otherwise the sub interfaces will not come up. Okay. Now let's see. And you see it's now up. Okay. So what is the uh, configuration? So in case of A say, we don't make use of do command. Even if we are in the config mode, we don't make use of do. Just, just try with show run interface zero slash dot 99. So this is the configuration. I, I have not configured IP address. So let's configure IP address. So I have to go first to that interface. I say IP address 192.168, it's 99. And what is the IP here? So it's 99.1. Oh, sorry, that is on the PC. But what is the IP over here? It's 99.100. Uh, if you see here, I have labeled it 99.100. So I have to configure 99.100 with class C subnet. Okay. Uh, we can give it a try before moving on. So that's good. It says up and up. Uh, let's see the show running. And this is a good configuration. Okay. Now let's go to the second interface where it says uh, 0 0.100. The first thing when you do the sub interfaces is you have to define the VLANs, which is required for the trunking v tagging. Okay. This because this is acting as a trunk. Now this is going to act as a trunk. So we have to define the tagging. And ASA is going to support only dot one Q tagging. It's, it will not support ISL. If you remember, uh, trunking has two protocol, uh, ISL and uh, dot one Q, right? This is only supporting dot one Q firewall. Now let's define name if VLAN 100. So it says security level by default was set to zero, but I know it's my internal uh, VLAN, so I'll make it as a part of highest security. What is the IP address here? It's 192.168.100.100. So where, where did I write that? I have written it here, 100.100. .100. It's class C, fine. 
so that was from uh, the asa side let's give a ping test okay so this is my first pc its gateway is 99.100 so it will not work the reason is they are tagged now the interface over here is tagged with 99 and 100 and you have not configured your switch yet so you, they are still on vlan 1 so whatever you are sending is going on vlan 1 and while coming here it's it see that it's a not not a rightful vlan so you have to tag your interfaces you will put 99 here you will put vlan 100 here access port and over here, you, you're going to make the trunking configuration and allow 99 and 100. So if you want, you can just keep it as it is. Let's configure the switch now. So on the switch side, uh, that is the Scotland uh, switch 07. Okay. Let's put the host name, Squ uh, Scotland switch 07. Let's define the access port first. So first access port, I'm going to define this. That is interface GI0 slash 0. No shut. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 99. Now I'll go to the upstream link, which is here. And uh, the interface here is 1 hyphen 2. Might be that's uh, beneath this banner. So basically it's. It, it, it is one slash two okay so if i just remove the banner i can show you so you can see that one slash two i'll bring it here i'm just trying to cover so that we have we have very less devices that's required for the lab otherwise guys would be confused right so i'll configure the trunking there it's one slash two i say switch port uh, trunk encapsulation dot one q switch port mode trunk switch port trunk allow vlan 99 and 100 which i have not configured but i'll configure that okay so before that there's no ping still but let's put this so have we done all the configuration Let's make no shut. So let's give a uh, show show trunk show interface trunk, which is gonna show me the trunking interface. And you can see now the PC one can uh, can ping to its own gateway, which is on the ASA firewall. Okay, so that proves that we have done the access layer and we have done the tra uh, trunking. So it's going to take the tag and it's going to all, all the switching side that we have covered already. Now time to configure PC2. Okay, PC2, the same concept, it's its gateway is 100.100. .100. Okay, so on the trunking side, I have configured already, but I have not configured over here. It is by default on VLAN 1 still. So if I show you, show VLAN brief. So you can see GI0 slash 3 is still under 1, right? So I have to change that. I'll go to interface GI0 slash 3 because I want this to be tagged with uh, 100 VLAN because on the ASA, the, the, the uh, in sub interface has a VLAN 100 tagging. So I'm going to say switch port mode access switch port access vlan 100 and no shutdown and uh, let's see that this comes up okay so it's going through that 50 seconds of uh, delay timer the stp if you remember it takes 50 uh, second for uh, its forwarding so after that okay see it, it started up and then let's see so it started forwarding now okay and we can see the pc is now trying to ping 
what about pc1 trying to ping pc2 is that happening we can check that by pinging the ip address of the second pc which is 100.1 so let's give it try by pinging the second pc okay which will not happen theoretically because we have not configured a lot of things so it's not happening okay pc1 to pc2 is not happening and similar way pc2 to pc1 shouldn't happen okay okay why is it not happening as you as you all know by default inspection engine for icmp is not enabled so if you see this uh, output so there is something called inspect and icmp is missing here right so we need to enable icmp i go to configuration t i take up this sorry okay it is single uh, copy paste uh, for some reason it went twice okay once you are there take up the second thing and now type the command so there are multiple things you can enable but i am focusing on icmp which is ping packet so once i did that let's see if is it coming up or not it it will not come the reason why it's not coming up is you know both of them are on the similar security levels right so if i show you what is the security level on both of them it's 100 and on second side it's again 100 so the ping will not happen you need to apply another command which says same security uh, permit enter interface and you see it started pinging right so these are the two default configuration these are the some initial configuration that you need on ac box from interview point of view this is very important because you will see lot of time interviewer asking you a uh, uh, question like i have given you ac firewall i have to uh, use us just tell me the configuration that uh, <clears throat> so that they are reachable to each other right so there are lot of things which is not very similar to your uh, switches and routers you did lot of additional thing in case of firewall so direct uh, uh, i mean the reachability between pc1 pc2 is fine once you enable inspection uh, icmp and uh, you also have enabled same security level interface now the concern is if i change the security levels okay i'm i'm sure 100 from a higher security level to a lower security level it's it will work but from lower to higher it will not work but what is the resolution for that right so let's say uh, just to make it uh, practical i'll i'll try i'll change this security level to 50 okay and we can see one of the ping will stop working so which ping will wo stop working from the pc1 point of view it will stop working okay so let me tell uh, let me draw it and let me tell you what what am i planning to do so let's say i have ac firewall i have the switch and i have my pc with 99 vlan and another pc with uh, 100 vlan so i'm trying to make this security level to be 50 so what happens is this pc1 okay carrying the vlan 99 will stop uh, pinging so this this packet is now on this direction right so this should stop because of low to high direction whereas the other pc which is this will still be running the reason is it's 100 to 50 and that's a rule for a asa firewall or any firewall that from a higher to lower you can ping but not on a other way so let's go to interface gi 0/0.99 and let's change the security level to 50 who should stop the pc one should stop and yes it looks like it stopped what about pc2 it should still work and it's still working so you can see right so it proves that the traffic flow from higher to lower will work uh, but from lower to higher will never work right so you can you can just see they are not working yet yeah, still now what is the solution for this the solution is to bring the acl and do the necessary uh, things right so this is where your uh, ASA firewall in production uh, 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 comes into 
uh, what do you say uh, when whenever you need to block some inter network communication you plug a firewall and there is where then the security team gets the ticket from lot of users saying that i want to communicate to this server on this port number please allow and that's the work of uh, the security engineer that to allow uh, the firewall uh, the firewall rules and all those things right so that is what something i'm going to do now and i'll show it so how do we enable uh, the access list there are two things that you know one is defining the access list and then calling it on the interface fine that's the same thing we are going going to do on asa firewall as well so let me define an access list because without defining i cannot call that because what are you going to call if you don't have defined already right so i'm going to define something first so and yes it's always extended acl in in case of firewalls this, there is no uh, room for a standard acl it's always extended so let's say access list I, i'm just defining an access list uh, let's make it for 99 because that is where the pc is impacted the pc for vlan 99 is impacted right it's not transmitting any packets or or not able to ping so i i for a uh, better uh, representation i would give vlan 99 with in statement basically this is nothing but this is a word but it will be helpful for me in the case of troubleshooting so normally what is the best practice is in, in case of production we make use of the uh, uh, vlan name or interface name and then we add that in or out say for example this is asa firewall right and let's say you have two interface so let's say this interface was named as sales team and this was named as marketing team so let's say you need to allow something on this direction so basically what are you gonna name it as you're gonna name this as this because it, it it's helpful while troubleshooting you you can now know that sales underscore in is for something which is traf where the traffic is entering but yes there can be also sales dot out and when is that that's when the traffic is leaving so when is traffic leaving when when the traffic was originated in this direction right so in such scenarios you can make use of this word to understand that it's a outgoing traffic on this interface in resembles that it's incoming traffic so it's about how you represent the uh, the traffic but this is just a word you can give anything you can give xyz you can give abc you can give any any kind of word but during troubleshooting you will not try, you will not understand what is xyz what is this with respect to to which interface right you might have a couple of interface you might have thousands of line how are you going to do a troubleshooting a quick troubleshooting if you know something like this you can quickly check the interface with the sales name id and you can see what is wrong with that right so that's why we will give some easy word so we understand in and out with respect to the traffic now why am i picking in so let's say this is my switch this is the asa firewall right so where is the traffic now stuck the traffic is stuck which is actually going in this direction it's ingressing to the asa interface what is the interface it's vlan 99 to have a better understanding i am making use of this word in because it's entering right and i have to write an access list to this word so it's it becomes more easier for me to understand so let's say access list vlan 99 underscore in you can make a upper case it doesn't matter it's just a word that's what it says it's a identifier so so I'll, let's go with caps okay access list vlan 99 underscore in if i do a question mark it's gonna show me lot many things the best practice is put a deny statement first if you allow then at a second everything will get allowed right so keep a deny statement and then keep on adding permit statement as soon as you get some request put a permit statement but the first statement 
put a habit of making it deny because that's a good thing if you put as soon as a permit statement any to any everything will be permitted right so i'm gonna say define by default deny icmp it's asking me source now i say any to any okay destination is any to any and if you want to log this you can make the word log comma so this is defining i'm defining something on this word that ICMP any source to any destination and just keep a log. It's gonna show you that there were hundred packets which were uh, matching this got denied or got dropped. So it will help you understand that there are so many packets coming on this line, right? Enter. Now this was defined. Now the second step, as usual, is call that. How how am I calling that? I make use of access group. It's asking me for the word and this is the word, right? So I'm going to call that it. It's asking me where, where exactly I want to apply. So you know that it's a in now. It's a in, in, in direction. If, if you see this traffic, it's actually going inside ASA firewall. So I'll make use of this word in. And now it's asking on which interface that's, the, that's, that's called as implementation or calling the ACL. So I say it's on interface VLAN 99. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. That's not going to help us because we have only allowed denied. The moment we allow that permit statement, then this will start working. This is a best practice. We did. We put a deny statement. Okay. And we put a access list. We called it. Now there could be better way to do this. That is sequence number because the, the the what happens is now this is taken has a sequence number as one as soon as you put some permit statement that will go to sequence number two and you know that the acls are top to down processing so once it goes to the first line it, it's gonna get discarded it's not gonna check the uh the second line so this was not a best practice i should have put a line number so let's try to do that okay I, i'll remove that and I'll put a fresh copy of the same line, but with a line number. So let's say I put a line number. In line number, let's give it 10 or we can give 100. Okay. It's nothing but you can have 1 to 99 as permit. And on your 100th line, you have the deny statement. It depends how you can also give 1000 if you think your production might have thousands of lines. It's a just lab, so I'm gonna put only hundred. Okay, there's there are things like deny extended. I I can go with extended. Okay, I can deny this. I can say any any and log. Okay, okay. So it says den deny ICMP any any log. Okay. So the two lines that I did is one is defining and implementing on the interface. Two lines, the most important two lines. Now, the thing is I have to put a permit statement so that this start working up. I'm not concerned about this because that's not gonna uh, uh, gonna stop because that's 100 to the 50 so it's going to be but for 50 to 100 traffic I have to put a permit statement and where is the permit statement going to be permit statement will be somewhere on the top okay so I can take this as a reference I'll put it here so I'll just make it like this okay so I say the sequence number one extended will be permitted on ICMP uh, between which to which source. So I say it's 192, 168, 99.1 to 192, 168, 100.1. Uh, so this would be the permit statement. So let's give it a try. Let's see what exactly the permit statement would be. Access list VLAN 99 underscore in. I give a line number one because you know the top to bottom processing so on my first line will be permit 
and then at the end i am keeping the deny i'm going to say uh, going to say extend it it's permit it's icmp uh I, I will not give any to any now then by default everything will be allowed and this will be non-effective line so I, it's that's that's not the how we give a permit statement permit statement should be always one to one okay not not uh, any to any so permit uh, icmp let's say 192 168 uh, 99 dot uh, let's say one it's asking me for subnet mask so it's a uh, 255 255 255 uh, let's consider one ip what is the destination ip it's 100 uh, dot one 255 255 255 255 okay so see this is not working yet but let's keep this Okay, so let's see why isn't working. Okay, so we can check show access list. So it says on one, I have permitted on second, it's okay. So I will stop and I'll restart. Okay, so basically this is not getting hit because of the hit counts. If you see the hit counts, they're not effective. So let's see why is it working. So this is 100.1, right? What is the interface access group? How do we check? We can make use of this command. Okay. And if I give it as like this, so there is no access group why is it no access group because if you remember when i did no over there the access group might have already removed right so when i when i just showed you the best practice of doing a no the access group was taken down when there is no interface access group that is then you are not even calling something or there is nothing that permit is gonna make a sense right so this is important the second step and you see it started pinging so that's what you just had defined but you had not called it and why was it not uh, called because when you did no uh, uh, when you you did no just to uh, put that line number 10 or 100 it also went automatically along with that no statement so i just put once again right now let's do show access list and you can see the hit count is hitting on the permit statement. So that's how we troubleshoot. And also my PC started working. Okay. So the more packets it's going to hit this permit statement, it's going to get incremented by every uh, plus one uh, packet. So every individual packet is incrementing it by one number. Okay. And there is no packet on hit count as of now. So this is how, this is the way we allow packet filtering on ASA firewall when we have different zones. Okay. And you know, what is the concept of uh, different zones? Now you can do a lot of things here. Uh, let's say if you wanted to change uh, uh, something from the second computer, then you can try that. So I, I give that part to you guys because you know what to do now. Okay. let me show you some of the troubleshooting concept here okay let's remove that access list okay so removing this access list this permit access list will not once again take back the interface access list okay because we already have that deny with us the reason why it took in the first place was i only had one deny statement and as soon as i took that the interface also went away but now I have two access list. One is permit and other one is deny. So you do any change on this. If you remove this or you remove this, it's not going to change or it's con not going to delete that interface. Okay. So the thumb rule is if you have one access list 
at least one access list should be there uh, so that this is effective if you take that one then this is also gonna get removed so what i'll do is i'll take the permit statement now once once again okay i want to show you something so let's take this out let's see what happens to this it stopped once again let's see the access list so you have the deny statement let's see the interface access list this is the command which will help you and you have that interface okay we are good now now let's see i i get an requirement from my uh, customer or from some user that uh, they want to uh, ping from pc1 to pc2 on icmp and they are not able to so what is your steps now troubleshooting steps you can of course go and check the access list but let's say you had thousands of access list will you be able to check all the thousands line manually there, there is not possible right so there is something called as packet tracer which will help you to show which will help you to see if 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 that uh, flow is allowed or not okay whatever the flow the user has requested pc1 to pc2 if that's already allowed or if that's missing okay and accordingly you can add the rule so let's say i make the use of packet tracer i put the command input if i do question mark it's asking me which interface is the traffic uh, been coming from originating so you know pc1 is connected to vlan 99 so i say it's on vlan 99 and then if I do question mark, it's asking me what kind of traffic are you trying to capture or, or to see the packet tracer. I say it's an ICMP. Now it says that enter the source IP. So source is 192.168.99.1. Uh, if I do question mark, it's asking me for the ICMP type. So you must know how ICMP work in the case of ICMP. But, but this can be sometimes tcp as per the ticket it can be udp also so don't always think that it's gonna be icmp if you're doing telnet it, if you're doing ssh if you're trying to do http https it will be all tcp traffic so in that case you will not put icmp you will put tcp in case of dns all those things you will start placing udp so it's depending upon customer so let's say my requirement was for icmp Okay, so I, I made use of uh, ICMP here. And regarding the code for ICMP, if you see here, so what is the ICMP code? Do anyone know? If I say source and destination, if I'm trying to ping, what exactly happens? There will be eco packet, eco uh, uh, request, and then you get eco reply right so what are the code here do 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 you guys know that yes so the code here is when the request is taken from source to destination the icmp code 8 is considered okay code number 8 at the same time when the destination replies back with eco reply you see the icmp code zero this is how ping works the ping utility which we always open up during troubleshooting this is what happens so the source to destination eco uh, is called as it's carrying code eight and once it's coming back it's taking zero so i'm going to do the same thing i'll i'll enter my code is eight once again, when I do question mark, it's going to ask me ICMP code and that's zero. Okay. For one side and then return traffic. Now let's do question mark. Now it's asking me for destination and what is de destination? It's 1968.100.1. If I do question mark, uh, that's enough for me. Okay. Let's do, let's check now what, what, what is the output I get from this packet tracer and how it helps me. So when I do this kind of packet tracer uh, analysis, so it's actually checking the packet flow. What kind of packet flow? The same packet flow, which we uh, checked in the last class or the previous class, this one. What does it say? It will check access list. It will check X late. It will check inspection. That's 
can be seen over here. It's checking access list. Uh, it checked route lookup. It checked access list. And we see that our access list deny is now taking place. There is no permit statement because I had uh, removed that to show this packet tracer uh, working of the packet tracer, right? So there is a defining, uh, sorry, this is defining and this is calling of that on the interface. So there is no permit statement. That's why I got the result as ACL is dropping on the first point, right? That's how you do the troubleshooting and you fix the issue. And let's say you bring up that ACL, whatever ACL you delete it, you are going to put it back. Okay. The permit statement, take out that no and place it up. Now let's redo the packet tracer once again. And now you see, now it says allowed. That means there is no more issues with me. And I, if I need to test it, it started working, right? So this is a troubleshooting mechanism in ASA firewall. Similar way, there's something else called as capture, which is going to show you if the packet is uh, in real reaching to this ASA or you're doing or you're, you're, you're troubleshooting on a, uh, some ASA firewall where the traffic is not meant to reach, right? There's, there happens when we get a uh, call from a uh, call for a troubleshooting and we end up applying the captures on some device where exactly the uh, packets are not meant to reach. You need to apply the capture on devices where the packet uh, is trying to pass through, right? So that's, this is the command which will help us to know if, if the packet is coming to this or not. Okay. The command is called as capture. You need to define, define a word. So you give something, some, some word, uh, testing or something. Okay. Uh, we are looking for interface basis. So let's say interface, um, is this. Okay, so I can give VLAN 99, okay, physical interface, VLAN 99. You need it to be real time. You need that to be matched. Don't, don't apply capture on a broad level because this capture is going to take a lot of resources, a lot of, lot of production don't recommend using this uh, command capture packet tracer is not not a wrong command it, it it's not going to take a lot of buffer it's just doing that uh, small test that's all capture is in real time going to collect the traffic right so if you put a uh, if you put a wider uh, range so many packets are going to be captured in the buffer of your ac so that's not recommended so always be precise about this very accurate what are you trying to uh, capture the packet so I'm going to say match now because I want the, that to be very specific. I want this to be only capturing the SIPs of ICMP packet. I, I cannot mention any because on a production, I can have a lot of packets for ICMP. I should be very specific. So I say uh, from 192, 168, 1 dot, sorry, uh, 99.1. That's the source. And on the destination, I want 192, 168. 90 uh, sorry 100.1 okay if i do enter i can see yes this is the right firewall because i can see the packets are coming to this box now let's do the next step of troubleshooting let's let's go and check the uh, packet tracer okay and i can see packet tracer is also good now the issue could be the second box is down i am not sure if the second box is down or something but from my side, from my firewall, the packets are going away, going outside. Now, the second person, the destination, I have to, I have to tell the first user that create a ticket and push to that person. Might be he's from server team or a DB team or a storage team and ask whether his box is up or not. Just, that's how your part get completed and you can come out of the call. Otherwise, if you do not know what to do, you will end up be in, being in that call forever and the people uh, who are driving the call will not let you to come out of that. Okay. So these are some troubleshooting command that doesn't end in AC, but yes, from CC, uh, NPCCI enterprise, that's enough uh, for, 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 for the AC part of view.
okay so you see uh, the traffic it's from 100 to 99 it's from 99 so basically eco reply eco request so this is carrying the code 8 this is carrying the code uh, 0 we can see that if i open up the wireshark here if i filter out for icmp so i said the first code will be uh, So basically it's not taking the new packet okay so let me uh, stop and uh, or let me take somewhere else because it happens uh, if if the lab was shut down because i showed you uh, from the scratch so i had to shut down right and this capture was initiated before that itself so in such scenarios, capture will not re-happen. So I'll take it for a fresh interface. So over here, I will put it for ICMP, okay? And uh, for first packet, reply packet, okay? If I stop this, for the reply packet, the ICMP code will be uh, eight. Okay, sorry. For request packet, the code is uh, eight. It's called as type eight and uh, for the second packet that is reply packet uh, the code is zero you can see over here this is that uh, reply packet so let's say this is source and this is destination okay when you initiate a ping command let's say uh, 192 168 100.1 so one packet gets originated now this packet is called as ping eco request and this is of type code 8 okay now similar way the second box if it happens to be live and if it replies back to the source now it's going to be ping packet once again it's a eco reply okay now the type code here is zero so this was not very important from the enterprise level but from security point of view when you have when you deal with a lot of firewalls allowing the rules that time these numbers are very much important because uh, most of the time security is about the numbers the tcp number udp numbers allowing the port number so these are one 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 particular task of a security engineer but you have like vpn troubleshooting uh the D ddos attacks pushing the policies there are a lot of other things also okay fine so uh this ends your uh, asa firewall and in the next class uh, i'll get other topics like device hardening the enable password all those things and the copp control uh, po policy plane so that that that's all for your security topic uh, from this syllabus okay so let me know if you guys have uh, any doubt with respect to, uh, to the class today and then we are good with winding off and these are all documented so you can also practice on, on your own so on 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 the notes there is the diagram the asa configuration okay uh, the icmp the same security level then the uh, switch configuration which talks about dot one q and access vlans this is the pc1 configuration so sometimes sometimes in some some rare case the pc1 and pc2 might need additional command that is routing okay in that case, I have given you this line. If it asks for, if it don't ask for, then you can skip this. Okay. You just can do the configuration uh, over here. And that, that, that will do the job. But there are reasons, there are some times when those changes will not uh, be acting as the route. For example, if, if I show you now, if you type route hyphen N, it, it, it is showing you the static rules, right? Sometimes this will be not effective uh, on, on these talkers. 
So what you can do is you can just try to put this command that says any traffic which is uh, coming to me put back to the ASA interface. Okay. So the issue is this this type of issue uh, you will see. Uh, let's say when you have your ASA, you have your switch, you have your PC1, you have your PC2. Okay. You have done all, everything. You have done the sub interface configurations inspect icmp uh, <clears throat> same security level but you see that ping is still not happening that's because your icmp or the eco request is going towards pc2 but pc2 doesn't have a proper route back it, it's not able to route back the traffic so just adding one single line inside this box will fix that bug i i don't call it as bug uh, it's something which is required, but yes, uh, if, if this is not able to do that, then we have to add that. So as soon as you add this, it's nothing but you're saying that any traffic now should take its own gateway, which is like uh, 100.1 and then it the the reply packet can come back. Okay, it's about pinging or, or, or pinging time. So for PC1, this is that optional command and for PC2, this is the optional command. Okay. For validation, what you need to do is you need to ping PC1 to PC2 and vice versa. So it should be successful. Second uh, task was change the security level. Okay. So I'll just make it green. So you know what is happening. So once you do that, it will stop working. You have to add this access list. So the first access list is defining deny. You are going to make one more access list. Uh, sorry, not access list, access group to call it on that interface and then a permit statement. Okay. So this is important statement, which is, uh, so if you want, you can make it subnet. If, if you want, you just make it host to host. Okay. So better would be host to host as a security engineer. Always it's IP to IP. It's never a network to network. Okay. And yes, you don't have to give always echo and echo reply. You can just give uh, echo that's enough. Okay. And as a validation, try to ping. Ping should be happening. And what are the two troubleshooting that I said? One is packet tracer command and the other one is capture command. So I'll put the rightful command on this. So whatever command that we used will might be help you. So this is the capture command, which I'll put it here, might be for your reference. And then you have a ICMP packet tracer. I'll put it over here. Okay. So that ends your ASA firewall, which I uh, told in the beginning of the batch that I'll uh, give a, a class on that. So any doubt, uh, let me see the chat window. Because router don't work on standard ACLs. Okay. They, they only work on extended. If, if you open up uh, your uh, device here, if you make use of access list. Okay. Let's give some word. Okay. So you have the standard, but we always make use of uh, extended because of those services because standard is not going to help me achieve uh, the services okay And the second question uh, when you run it under ASTM for legacy uh, firewall. So I didn't understand that part. So any further doubt? Are we good with this?
all right then so i'll give i'll i'll pass on the video and the document and uh, maybe you can start practicing okay so let's meet up in the next class and uh, have a nice day see you soon everyone